All right. Now let's get into some studies that look that start to touch on, although we'll get to the mechanism more in a mo mechanisms more in just a moment that could explain some of these benefits because people are reporting benefits. And there is evidence in the published literature to, to hint at what could be happening here. All right. Now, one interesting study is from uh, 2016 where they looked at a low protein, high carb. It was also low fat diet, but they deliberately restricted protein too. And then they looked at a bunch of metabolic markers. Now, this 2016 study is interesting because it's primarily an animal study, but there was a little bit of a human arm to it. Now, with the animal aspect, they took almost 1,000 animals and spread them up randomly across 25 diets that were varying in the ratios of macronutrients, so proteins to carbs to fat ratios. And then, as I noted, they had a, what's called a human validation arm. The methodology of the study tested metabolic health, things like glucose tolerance and insulin sensitivity with some blood tests. And the finding revealed that low protein, 5 to 10 percent, high carb diets, reduced uh, fasting blood glucose and insulin more than control than animals on just a standard diet. And this was even despite the higher carb load. Now, of course, those are animals. In the human aspect of it, a very small group showed similar trends. So this wasn't a human study per se, but they included a human component. But they found some data that supported that view, that lower protein led to improved glucose handling. And of course, it was a very small group. It was just a few weeks. And so you can't really translate this too well. Um, and there were no long-term health outcomes. There was no monitoring of physical activity and sleep and cognition and other things. But the study does support the potential, at least short-term, um, metabolic benefits to the a diet that is very, very high carb and low protein and low fat. Uh, now, there was another study, uh, a 2022 study, which I have noted Previously, for those of you who are part of the um, BenBickman.com or the Insulin IQ communities, you would have benefited from listening to one of my research reviews where I talked about this article, a 2022 randomized trial. And it was interesting to me and why I highlighted it at the time uh, a couple months ago was because they, they put these individuals into two different groups. One was just a group of protein restriction and one was calorie restriction. And it was on 21 human patients with metabolic syndrome. So insulin resistance, prediabetes over about the period of, of one month. And it was under some supervised inpatient conditions. So it's pretty well controlled. So a good study. Participants that they, they were split up into the two groups, the calorie restriction group consumed a diet with 25% fewer calories than their baseline energy needs. So they would have measured their metabolic rate and then said, all right, here's your metabolic rate. We're going to give you 25% fewer calories than your metabolic rate would demand in order to keep you where you are. But the protein restriction group um, was isocaloric, matching their energy expenditure. So it was just eating their normal amount of calories but it was low protein. So protein was no more than 10% of the calories. Both interventions, the calorie restriction and just the protein restriction, but remember they had normal calories. So they were eating more calories. So both interventions led to significant weight loss, primarily from fat mass. Um, it was about 6.6% 6 6 in the protein restriction and 8% in the calorie restriction, so very similar. They noted also reduced blood glucose, reduced HbA1c levels, uh, and um, what they would consider improved lipid profiles. So LDL went down, which I find neither good nor bad, but also triglycerides went down, which I consider to be a decidedly good thing. But blood pressure improved and even markers of inflammation improved. Insulin sensitivity improved surprisingly well. It improved by 93% in the protein restriction group and 62% in the calorie restriction group. And they measured this with the hyperinsulinemic euglycemic clamps. And they reported no muscle loss, no changes in gut microbiome.
or anything like that. So these findings, I think, are some of the most compelling, although I'm going to get to another interesting one when we get to the mechanisms in just a moment. But they certainly do suggest that even in the absence of any kind of calorie restriction, protein restriction can mimic some of the benefits of calorie restriction for managing things like metabolic syndrome without requiring an overall reduction in energy. So this could be why individuals who are using or advocating for the sugar diet don't tell people that they need to restrict their calories because this study would suggest that you can eat as much calories as you were before. And as long as you just restrict your protein, you're going to see some improvements. And indeed, they did. It's a good study. Again, 2022 study. For those of you that are insiders, you can get the reference um, by accessing through the site. Okay. Now, what are some other concerns that I have? Even though I just shared with you a study, to me, um, and in fact, a couple studies with more to come, a notable issue with the sugar diet is that many, if not all, of the advocates of the sugar diet that I've seen, in fact, all of them that I can think of and that as I was thinking of when I was creating some talking points here, they are very lean, highly active men. Uh, that is the that is the two-fold description of these individuals. Very lean, actually three. Very lean, very physically active, and they're all dudes. Um, the, that to me introduces some confounding variables. There's very high muscle mass, very high um, physical activities, uh, physical activity rates. Because of both of those, there's very high insulin sensitivity and very high glucose tolerance. Those are not the same thing. But it certainly means these are guys who are able to process high loads of refined sugars without much denting of their metabolic function. But, but there's a worry there to me that if you start to apply this diet broadly, is everyone going to respond the same way? Um, one important point to that is that I think the sugar diet's efficacy could depend on individual traits beyond being a guy who's very lean, who's very physically active, but including things like self-control and susceptibility to addictive eating behaviors. High carb diets that are rich in uh, refined sugars or simple sugars like fruits, fruit juices, and even sweets, because a lot of them are just even eating like gummy candies. Um, it could absolutely exacerbate some food addiction behavior, really driving these reward pathways like what we see with substance abuse. Remember, in all of the human studies that look at the neurobiology of addiction to foods, it is always – it always comes back to carbohydrates. Uh, not that there isn't evidence to suggest that high carb and high fat is also a, a rewarding addictive thing, but it's never just fat. It's never just protein. It is always the common variable being carbohydrates.